607 people are estimated to go missing in the world every year. 607 people gone without a trace. How many assume new identities? How many are buried, undisturbed for decades until new construction uncovers old remains? The longer a person is missing, the higher the chances of closing their case dwindles. So today, here at Unexplained Mysteries, we'll be taking a look at three mysteries. Mary Acuri found buried in her backyard. When 36-year-old Mary Acuri bought a house with her husband Albert in 1960, she did not know it would also become her final resting place. She had two children and happily married when she moved into the house on 5445 Black Street in East Liberty, Pennsylvania. Or so everyone thought. Albert Acuri was described by neighbours as a sweet, funny, laid-back gentleman. He and Mary and their two teenage children lived in that house on Black Street for four short years before Mary went missing. Albert told their children that their mother had packed her things and left them, presumably for another man. This was also the story that friends and family friends were told about Mary's disappearance, though no one believed that Mary was the type of person to abandon her kids seemingly overnight, without showing any signs that she was about to do so. With Mary gone, they had little else to go on. Teresa Rocco, head of the police bureau's missing persons unit, as well as the godmother to one of Mary's children, knew there had to be more to the case. She waited for Albert to file a police report. He would never file a missing persons report, though. Mary's sister and mother did try to file, but according to their accounts, they were not taken seriously. This is disputed by the Pittsburgh police, who claim they never received a missing persons report in this case and that Mary was assumed to have left of her own free will. The following year, Albert Akiri passed away in a motor vehicle accident. It was later presumed that he was travelling at such a high rate of speed that he was intentionally taking his own life. For some, this solidified their suspicions of foul play in the Mary Akiri disappearance. There were other signs noted from the family that cast more doubt onto Albert's story though. Before taking his own life and shortly after Mary went missing, Albert claimed that a large freezer had been stolen out of their garage in broad daylight. A family member reflected that it was the perfect size to store Mary's body to prevent it from decomposing. Shortly after that, Albert installed a cement slab in their backyard as a kind of patio. Mary's great-nephew, Charles Sperner, was only five years old when Mary disappeared but he remembers vividly that his mother thought that Albert had hurt Mary and put her under the cement patio. That was where Mary was found during a construction site dig in 2018. Of course, her remains were in such an advanced state of decomposition that no determination was made as to how she passed away. The medical examiner's office ruled her manner of loss of life as undetermined. Since he passed away in 1965, Albert has been suspected of taking the life of his late wife. He cannot be charged with the evidence available now, and so far the case remains open. Disappearance of Ravel Balmain Ravel Balmain met a similar fate, although her remains have not been found. Last seen in 1994, Ravel was a 22-year-old professional dancer and model. She led a double life, however that she kept hidden from her closest friends and family. Ravel was also a casual escort, but according to some reports, Ravel had started doing this in order to save money for a trip to Japan that would further her professional dancing career. The last person believed to see Ravel alive was Gavin Samer. He claims that he had won $150 at a casino that night, which he decided to spend on a woman. When he called the agency that Ravel worked for, he gave a fake name. Thankfully, the agent did its due diligence at that point and noticed that the name Gavin gave was not the name his phone was registered to. When they called him back and told him what they found, he conceded and gave his real name. Gavin Samer claimed to have had a girlfriend at the time, which may have been his reason for giving a fake name. Samer claims after their appointment, he drove Ravel to the Red Tomato Inn and left her there. There are no witnesses to corroborate this. Around this location, Ravel's last known location, her makeup bag, keys and one shoe was found. Ravel's body has not been recovered. 
Seymour remains the number one person of interest in the case, a fact that he is straightforward with when he is interviewed. Seymour spent about 15 years living in Tasmania as a recluse, until 2018 when he pleaded guilty to old theft charges. Strangely, years later, another person close to Seymour suffered a sudden death. In April of 2020, he was arrested for assaulting his former roommate. He was accused of committing violation offences against her will, but the charges were dropped when she passed away tragically in an explosion in her apartment. Though this does not prove motive, it does seem too strange to be a coincidence. In May of 2021, the family announced a $1 million award for anyone with information that would lead to the discovery of Ravel's remains. Mary Curie's remains were not found for 60 years. Ravel's family hoped to have some closure before then. They have already waited 26 years in the dark, and sadly both of her parents passed away without ever finding out what happened to their daughter. Janine Vaughan Disappearance Another story that families are hoping will be brought back into the spotlight is the story of Janine Vaughan. Janine was last seen on December 7, 2001 at 4am, where CCTV footage shows her on Keppel Street, Bathurst. The security footage shows her getting into the front passenger seat of a bright red four-door medium-sized sedan. Police interviewed over 1,000 people in the investigation of Janine's disappearance until 2003 when she was presumed deceased. Among those investigated for her disappearance was a local policeman, Brad Hoseman. The Police Integrity Commission did not release their findings for some time. However, Brad was forced to leave the force with no retirement benefits. Around the time of Janine's disappearance, Brad told the police that he was staying with his mother near Newcastle. However, he changed his story when he was investigated by the Police Integrity Commission, admitting that he had been in Bathurst. In 2009, the coroner who had taken the case recreated what was last known of Janine's movements on the day she went missing. He walked along the street, dimming the streetlights to make the recreation as real as possible. During this time, Brad Hoseman was brought up once again. Friends of Vaughan had claimed that Hoseman would often walk by the shop where she worked and wave to her while she was inside. According to her friends, she had expressed concerns about Hoseman's actions seeming a little like stalking, but nothing was taken too seriously and no paperwork was ever filed in the matter. Vaughan's former boyfriend of five years recalled that she did complain about notes, flowers and even lingerie being left on her car while she was at work. Is it a coincidence that Hoseman knew where she worked and purposely walked by to wave to her often? Did he have any reason to be walking by and seeking her out in the window? Was it because he was on his way to her car to leave small tokens and gifts? We can only speculate as no one has come forward with information about the matter. We can only hope that technology and science progresses in such a way that allows us to find out what happened to these women after so many years. The people who may have information on any of these cases are aging, and their memories are as well. We can only hope for their families that someone can give them peace sooner rather than later. But what do you make of these disappearances? Be sure to let us know your thoughts in the comment section below and help us by growing this community while working to solve these unexplained mysteries. Thank you for watching and don't forget to subscribe for more videos.